Hi, my name is Lee Davis, one of the pastors here at Berlin Church in Lewis Center. And I'm Rick Negley, and we're grateful that you've joined us for this time together. We're going to spend some time today reflecting a bit on Pastor Rick's teaching from Sunday from John chapter 21. In particular, the dangers of comparing ourselves to others and how Jesus frees us from that. So Rick, that first question, what are the dangers in comparing ourselves with others in our relationships when we unhealthfully compare ourselves with those around us? I've observed three primary dangers in my own life and experience. The first would be that of um, self-condemnation, where I look at others and I think that person is better than I am, that person is better, I'm not as good, I don't measure up, I'm not enough, or I don't do enough, and so we end up condemning ourselves, and it's actually a, a subtle form of pride because we end up focusing on ourselves. We're very self-centered when we're comparing ourselves to others, even if it's condemning ourselves. A second one is self-pity, when we think, I deserve better that we really are placing ourselves in the place of God and thinking, God, you didn't get it right. I deserve better than this. And so there's the feeling that others are better, self-condemnation. There's the feeling that I deserve better, self-pity. And then there's pride in which we say, I am better. I'm really better than all those people around us and they don't deserve to be in that place of honor because I'm better, I'm more talented. So all of those things get our focus on ourselves ultimately, even as we're comparing ourselves to others, and they take our uh, focus off of the Lord and prevent us from following him faithfully. The good news is that Jesus frees us from this. Ever since the fall in the garden from our first parents, we have struggled with pride. And just as God told Adam and Eve, they would not only have a fall from their relationship with him, but they would have a fall from their relationship with one another. But God promised a Redeemer who would come and not only heal their relationship with him, humanity's relationship with him, but humanity's relationship among themselves. And that's exactly what Jesus has come to do. The healing that Jesus has provided for us with God heals our relationships with others. One of the central features of the gospel, of the good news, is that God accepts us now just as he accepts the Son. Our identity is not found in our performance. We are not wrecked on our worst days when the worst features in our lives come out. God does not love us more on our best days when we perform to the best of our abilities and seemingly get nothing wrong. God accepts us on our best days and our worst days, not because of any inherent self-righteousness, but because the righteousness of Jesus has been applied to us by his Spirit when we come to him in faith. And so one of the central features of the gospel, the good news, is that the God of heaven, the God of eternity, my very creator, treats me like he treats my, his own son. That seems too good to be true, but it is true. And because I have been united to Christ by faith, the Father loves me. That is my identity. I am a son of God. And therefore, on my best days and on my worst days, I don't have to worry about performance. Now certainly I should follow him in obedience. I should give him all of my heart. But I don't have to measure up to God. And therefore, when I find this kind of freedom, I don't have to measure up with those around me. I am simply called to love them. I will not always do that perfectly, but because God accepts me in Christ, I can live with freedom without cross comparison. And therefore, I don't have to worry about self-condemnation. I don't have to worry about self-pity. I don't have to worry about measuring up and be the best one in the room because God accepts me in Christ and loves me. And this is really, really good news, both in my relationship vertically with him and in my relationship horizontally with others. It breaks down the rat race of comparison And for this, we can be very thankful and be at rest. Rick, any final thoughts that come to mind today? Well, it's a wonderfully freeing truth and thought that we can be free from comparison to others as we simply focus on Jesus, who he is and what he's done for us and for our salvation, and that we can faithfully follow him as we keep him front and center in our focus. Thank you for joining us today. We love you.